The materials you'll need to make your own hand embroidered iron on patch are needles, fabric, I always use 100% cotton, iron on adhesive like heat and bond, embroidery floss, a pattern, I recently watched Doro Hidoro, so I wanted to embroider the character Nikaido, and a way to transfer the pattern onto fabric. There are a few different ways to do this. I recommend using a water soluble marker. Generally, I place my pattern underneath the fabric and use a light source, like a sunny window or a light pad, and trace the pattern onto the fabric using one of these markers. It usually only takes a bit of water to get the ink to disappear, but you should be careful with these because they can be sensitive to light and humidity, and I've had a few patterns fade off the fabric over time, and sometimes even overnight. I have also used pens and pencils in the past to transfer my patterns, but I definitely don't recommend this as the lead and ink can sometimes stay in the embroidery floss as it goes through the fabric. Another option is to use a water soluble stabilizer. I do this when I'm feeling lazy or if the design has a lot of details that I want to make sure transfer perfectly. I'll either trace the pattern onto the stabilizer or I'll use my printer to print the pattern and then it just peels off and you can stick it onto your fabric. The first step is to cut out the pattern that I printed on the water soluble stabilizer. I like to leave a bit of an edge on the stabilizer when cutting it out. If you transferred your pattern directly to the fabric, you can skip this step. Next, I remove the stabilizer from the backing and stick it to the center of the fabric. I'm going to be using an embroidery hoop while I stitch, but you don't actually need one to embroider. It helps a lot to have something holding the fabric taut, but you can also hold it in your hand while you embroider. I secure the fabric in the hoop to get ready to start stitching. I want the fabric to be taut, but I'm careful to not pull it too tight. I then pick out the embroidery floss I'll need. I just use a reference photo of the character I'm embroidering and I try to match the colors as best as possible. These are all the colors that I picked out. It's kind of a ridiculous amount, but I wanted the patch to have a lot of detail. Your pattern can be as simple or as complex as you like and use as many or as few colors as you want. Next, I start to fill in the design. When I use the water soluble stabilizer, I always start by securing the stabilizer to the fabric. It does stick on, but I've noticed that the stabilizer can move or warp with tension as I work, so by placing down a few stitches in the center and all around the edge of the stabilizer, I can make sure that the pattern will stay in place while I work. These stitches are usually pretty small and far enough away from the edge to easily remove them once the embroidery is complete. Now that the initial stitches are in, I begin to fill in the first section. When I first started embroidering, I always began with a black outline. This can help a lot if you're using water soluble markers because they can fade and disappear over time if it gets sunny or humid and it can help to have a permanent outline of your design on the fabric. However, over time I started filling in areas first and then adding in the outline because it looks a lot neater in my embroideries. I recommend trying out both ways and doing what works best for you. For this embroidery, I focused on one section at a time and filled most areas with long and short stitches. I like to add in the darker areas first, but there's no real rule about how you do it. Once I get to the end of a strand, I usually make two to three tiny stitches to secure the thread to the fabric. I do this in areas that will be covered, but if there are none, I will weave the excess thread through the thread in the back of the embroidery. Once I got a few areas filled in, I used black floss to add in the outlines and some smaller details. Another thing I like to do while filling in areas is lay down some initial stitches in the direction I would like the thread to go in. Adding in some curves in different directions to your stitches can add a lot of detail, texture, and shape to your embroidery. Sometimes I'll even draw in the direction I want the stitches to go with water soluble markers so I can have a bit of a guide while I work. When I get to parts with a lot of detail, like the hands, I will usually work with a few different colors at once. It can get a little tricky to work with multiple strands of floss, but it helps me stitch a lot more efficiently this way. 
I attach a needle to each strand and alternate between the colors as I work. Here, I had one color for the shadows, the highlights, and then the outline. I also added in a few satin stitches to fill some sections. You want to be careful with satin stitches, because if you make them too long, they won't hold their shape well unless the embroidery is kept taut in a frame or a hoop. Even the length of the stitch here was kind of pushing it and probably would have looked better with a long and short stitch. This is how the finished embroidery turned out. At this point, I still need to go in and remove the initial stitches I put in to secure the stabilizer to the fabric. This is pretty simple, and I usually use a seam ripper for this. Once they're out, I run the pattern underwater to remove the stabilizer and let it dry. Once it's dry, it's time to add the iron-on backing. I'm using Heat and Bond, but you can use any iron-on adhesive that works for your fabric. I cut out a piece of adhesive that will cover the back of the embroidery as well as the surrounding area. First, I iron the embroidery to get the fabric as flat as possible. Then I place the heat and bond adhesive side down on the back of the embroidery. Next, I iron for 2-3 to three seconds in each section to secure it to the fabric. It really doesn't take much time at all, but make sure to follow the directions for whatever adhesive you have because they may be different. Next, use some fabric scissors to cut out the patch. I usually do a rough cut first and then go in and cut closer to the edge. I left about a fourth of an inch of an edge on the patch that will be covered with floss. Lastly, I go in and cut off any pointy edges because it can be really difficult to put an edge on such a sharp point. Sometimes it's best to even go in and round them out. You can remove the adhesive backing at this point, but I personally like to leave it on so I'm not constantly touching that adhesive underneath. Once I add in the edge, it's not too difficult to remove the backing, but you can do it either way. I'm going to add in a black edge. I normally do black, but you can do whatever color you like. To start, I go in with three strands of embroidery floss, not the end, and bring the needle up from the back to make a small anchor stitch. There's an area near her hair that will be difficult to fill with the edge, so I'm going to go in and fill that in first. I normally try and do this before I get to this point, but I just missed it. Once it's filled in, I start adding an edge with a simple whip stitch. With the thread coming from below, I take my needle into the fabric from the top, right along the black border of the embroidery, and pull it through to cover the edge. I repeat this process, taking the needle down into the fabric from the top and pulling it through until the edge is fully covered. I like to put the stitches as close together as I can to get as much coverage as possible, but that's just personal preference. The point of doing this is to protect the raw edge of the fabric that can easily fray over time. The adhesive backing helps a ton with fraying, but it won't help forever, so it's important to protect the edges. This process can take a while if you have a long border to your patch, and I think I ended up using a whole sky of floss to cover it. When I got to the end of the length of floss, I just weave it under the previous stitches as far as I can and snip off the end. After that, I just add in more floss the same way as I started and continue the whip stitch until the whole edge is covered. The very last step is to remove the adhesive backing. Usually a few pieces might start coming up as you do the edges, so just grab those and pull them off. This isn't too difficult, you just need to take your time and be careful. After that, the patch is complete. I really love how this patch turned out. It took a very long time to finish because of the size and amount of detail, but it was definitely worth it. The 
last thing I wanted to go over was how to add this to a jacket. I have one that I've been slowly adding my handmade patches to and I decided to put this Nikaido patch near the back on the bottom. I actually don't make many iron-on patches anymore because I prefer to sew them on regardless of whether I have a backing. Because of the edge, you won't be able to get that part of the patch to stick, so I always add at least a few stitches to truly secure it, even once it's ironed on. I go in first with two stitches on either side of her waist just to keep it in place while I iron. I always iron from the back to get the best seal, and it can be hard to keep the patch in the right place, so the stitches help a lot. From the inside of the jacket, I iron for just 2-3 to three seconds on each part of the patch to make sure the adhesive sticks. Next, I go in with more black floss and add in stitches every inch or so around the edge to fully secure the patch to the jacket. This will keep it in place, but will also make it easy to remove if I choose to do so. Once I'm finished, I make multiple tiny stitches in one spot that will be hidden underneath the patch and I tie it off. This is how the jacket's looking so far. I actually have a ton more iron-on patches that I need to add to it. When I first started embroidering, I mostly just wanted to get as much practice as possible, so I would embroider a lot of my favorite characters from random shows and games to make into patches. They started out pretty simple at first, but over time I really improved and was able to get a lot more detail into them. I hope you find this tutorial useful. Make sure to leave any questions you might have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.